What's going on, everyone? Happy Monday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Monday edition of the Pandemic Update for Monday, July 22nd, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily COVID pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Let's face it, there are a lot of different viruses out there, but you hardly ever hear about them in the the media. You need a place where you can come and be informed on what the levels are in the United States and at times other places around the world. I try and do as many countries as possible when I find data on places elsewhere besides the United States. But overall, you just need to be informed with what's going on. The COVID pandemic never ended and all this illness you may be hearing about in the summertime, that's not normal. And you need to be informed with what's going on. That's what I do here. I keep you informed of the latest levels, latest variants, and all the other illnesses. Want to stay informed? Subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up. That helps me in the algorithm. It helps tell YouTube, hey, you're liking this video. Share these videos with anyone you know. Hit that notification bell to be notified when I do my videos. And, of course, leave your comments down below. All right, we do have just a few news stories for today. And, of course, we do have some weekly updates, including Walgreens and BNO News. And then we have some other stuff to talk about as well. Starting off today in the sports category, Ravens, Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson is sent home from training camp practice due to a reportedly pretty bad illness. So he showed up for practice. Then he started feeling ill, and apparently it was pretty bad. They're not saying the words COVID. They're not saying what it is. They're just saying the words illness. And we do see this happen time and time again in various different sports, musicians, events, all kinds of different people where they just say illness. They don't state what it actually is, but he is going to miss a few days of training camp. Again, this is NFL football. Training camp, yeah, it's that time of the year. This is the first one we've reported of the season, and I highly doubt it is going to be the last one, and he is going to be missing a few days because he's dealing with a pretty bad illness. In Australia, RSV is rising, and it is getting uh, concerning in the older populations. They are seeing a big increase at this time of RSV cases, and it says in 2024 so far, Get this, there have been 124,000 RSV cases so far, which is 1.5 times higher than the same period last year. That is actually not a good thing at all, because oftentimes, Australia, what happens there now, it is their winter still, what happens there now is an indicator of what's going to happen elsewhere in the world when we have our winter. Bad indication of what could be to come with RSV. Alrighty, we took a poll yesterday. We don't like to get political here on the channel too much, but I felt I needed to ask this because it was something that was on my mind, and there are still four hours left in this poll. Do you think Joe Biden catching COVID again is a big reason he dropped out? Well, 863 votes so far, and 65.8% said yes. 34.2% said no. Some people said he may have already been dealing with post-COVID issues from his previous infection, and I do agree with that. Uh, he did definitely seem to have developed that cough that you see in so many speeches, the raspy voice that you see in so many speeches at the debate. I mean, you see a lot of those things, and I don't recall him having those issues back in 2020 before his first round of COVID. And then he had another round, and I think that may have been the final thing that did him. There's probably other reasons as well. We won't get into that, but out of the polls, 65.8% said yes, 34.2% said no. Oh, look at that. Now it's 65.9%. See, people are still voting. What's your opinion? Leave it down below, or you have four hours left to vote in as well. Probably about three and a half by the time this video is out. All right, BNO weekly update. The weekly U.S. COVID update from BNO. And it's not good news. New cases are now at 130,895. Remember, that's an estimate. Many different reasons. Big one being these at-home tests, and another being, oh, it's just a cold, it's not COVID, I don't need to get a test. Yeah, that's another big problem as well. And the average is now 107,000. 
857. That had a big increase. That went up by 12,608 in the hospital. Also a decent size uh, increase at this point. 3,583. That's up by 663 in the ICU. 367. That's up by 79. New deaths, 552. And the average is now up to 493. Deaths will continue to rise. Even after this wave peaks, for multiple weeks afterwards, we will see deaths rise. And who knows how fast this wave is actually going to go down after it does peak, if it goes down much, because there are all these new variants that keep popping up. So, uh, yeah, deaths could be high for quite some time. We saw last year, second half of the year, had the majority of the deaths for the year. But the good news is, deaths, as of right now, are on pace to be less than last year. Hopefully it stays that way, but we'll have to wait and see how high they go. COVID cases continue to rise in large parts of the U.S., Though, the amount varies by state, and there's early data suggesting some areas may be at or near a peak for this summer wave. Well, we can definitely tell you Hawaii has already peaked. We thought Alaska peaked, and it looked like it did. Then it started rising again. California may be peaking relatively soon, but remember, we do have this new KP.3. Let me get it correctly. I think it's KP.3.1. One. We'll look up the, the, at the variants in just a little bit, but uh, there's that variant which is still rising in the United States, so we'll have to see if that does anything or slow down the peaking process in any point. The most notable increases this week were reported in Virginia. Wow, Virginia had a 105% increase. Georgia, 64% increase. Nevada, 58% increase. Maryland, 47%. Minnesota, 38%. New Mexico, 36%. Tennessee, 35%, and Michigan was up by 31%. Only 34% of hospitals in the U.S. submitted COVID data this week, which is similar to last week, but down from 91% in May. This means actual case numbers and hospitalizations are higher than reported. So with only 34% reporting, we still got 3,583. You have to think that number is significantly higher in reality. And I can tell you for a fact, ambulance calls have been, they've been up here right now, at least here in southeast Pennsylvania. They've been very busy. I've been seeing a lot of ambulances. So, yeah, it, it makes sense that it would actually be higher. More than 500 new deaths were reported for the second week in a row. And this figure, 552, is the highest since early May. It's also the 227th week in a row with more than 400 new COVID deaths in the U.S. or nearly 1.2 million deaths during the same period. So far this year, nearly 4 million COVID cases have been reported in the U.S., causing at least 309,868 hospitalizations and 33,140 deaths. With that number likely being lower than this time last year, a good chance that we will hopefully end up with less deaths than we had last year. Already moving on now to the National Allergy Map for today and some good news. 32% of the country is in low to medium status. You are seeing a lot of yellow, but you're also seeing a lot of greens and dark greens. You're not seeing any oranges, and you're also not seeing any reds, which is a good thing at this time. What is not good is the air quality map. It's really starting to get concerning, especially in the West, because of wildfire smoke. Take a look at this. Up in Canada and the Pacific Northwest, you can see widespread reds and oranges. And this is even spreading into the Central Plains at this time. Bad air quality is because of wildfire smoke. If you have to go outside anywhere where you're into darker oranges or even the reds, please consider masking up because it really is going to affect your ability to breathe, especially if you have asthma or COPD. Please consider staying indoors as much as possible in these areas because you are really going to risk having an asthma attack or something go wrong if you go out in those areas. And a quick Google search for wildfire smoke shows Canadian wildfire smoke. It's moving into Colorado. It's moving into Wisconsin, Wyoming. Several different states are starting to see this. And there's wildfires in California now as well. Heat-related illnesses. They actually went up a little bit in some places. You can see Delaware, the Mid-Atlantic region, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, 
up into the northeast there's a little bit of an increase and then just scattered about throughout the country with a large number of heat related illness calls out on the west coast at this time and of course we are going to probably see breathing difficulty calls as well because of wildfire smoke being the issue want to learn more about what's going on with climate and the weather you can do that over on my x page for that which is at climate data report and of course for all things covid you can go over to covid data report on x as well all right moving on to philadelphia for today and we do need to update this philadelphia reported on sunday 773 ems calls and taking a look at what's going on in southeast pennsylvania right now we can see that in montgomery county pennsylvania currently there are 14 ems incidents at this time respiratory emergencies one of them cardiac emergency seizures back pains a whole bunch of things going on we're not seeing too many breathing difficulty calls we don't have the wildfire smoke issue here yet but if we do tap into a northwest wind or a trough comes down from canada what normally would be nice weather could end up being smoky weather if we get a flow that comes in from the northwest say from the plains great lakes or even canada itself chester county pennsylvania is reporting a few calls right now falls a couple times sick person seizures Ooh, east vincent township cardiac arrest that's not a good thing respiratory difficulty another sick person so yes there are some calls to be had in chester county at this time Alrighty, moving on taking a look at the weekly walgreens update and we do have some bad news for you today the national positivity rate did go up 39.6 percent the prior week was 39.2 percent that's up by 0.4 percent but that's even with testing going up so there were now 7,636 tests in the past week and the previous week was 6,767 so the number of tests did go up and the positivity rate still rose anyhow now let's take a look at a few states around the country we can see the green states positivity rates dropping red orange rising and majority of these white states did not report and that is quite a few states imagine how many tests there would be if all the states reported would probably be closer to 8,000 maybe 9,000 tests or maybe even 10,000 tests because I'm seeing states like Massachusetts did not report this week and Florida that usually has quite a few tests that did not report so heck maybe even 10,000 tests would have occurred this week let's start off on a positive note on a green state Texas and Texas this week the positivity rate was 42 percent even the previous week was 43.7 percent difference of down 1.7 percent total test 1619 versus 1331 big increase in testing there Pennsylvania Ooh, yikes this is not good 34.7 percent this week 28.6 percent last week that's a difference of up 6.2 percent total test 72 versus 56 testing up positivity rate up you get the idea covid cases are rising mississippi covid cases rising here as well 31.7 percent this week the prior week was 20 percent that's a difference of up 11.7 percent total test 41 versus 25 New Mexico, 35.6% this week for COVID positivity rate. That's 29.7% last week. That's up by 5.8%. Total test, 45 versus 37. California, a state we hope to see peaking relatively soon. And take a look at this, 46.5% positivity rate this week. That's ridiculous. The prior week was 42.8%. That's up by 3.8%, but testing did go down. 303 versus 353 that could be a result of a decrease in testing because if they were still rising i think that positivity rate would have increased even higher nebraska this week yikes this is not good at all 51.4 percent versus 29.4 percent difference of up 22 percent 35 tests versus 34 you need to be doing a lot more testing than this and let's end walgreens on a positive note on a green note and that's washington state 32.2 percent positivity rate this week the prior week was 41.5 percent difference of down 9.3 percent total tests 59 versus 135 uh, that's with a big decrease in testing so yes your cases at this time are dropping the covid activity level in canada viral activity level is moderate flu a is also moderate that's not good 
Uh, flu B is not detected at this time, and the viral level of RSV is relatively low at this time. All right, let's take a look at two wastewater sites today. First, we'll go down to Harrison, Arkansas, and we can see Harrison, Arkansas, for COVID at this time, is seeing a slight increase. And let's go somewhere else. How about we do another checkup on Las Vegas? Remember Las Vegas last week? Some of the highest levels of the entire pandemic, and we'll actually zoom this out. Well, the highest levels since wastewater scan started tracking Las Vegas. And take a look at this. Though they were rising, and they still are at their highest levels ever for wastewater scan. Most recent update, though being a wonky one, is showing a drop. One can only hope that that drop is real, and they do start dropping soon. So maybe that is an encouraging sign. All right, those CDC um, variants, and we were talking about one of them earlier. First off, KP.3 leads the way in the United States at 32.9%, and then it is the KP.3.1.1 variant that is at 17.7%. We'll have to watch what happens there. It's looking like it's going to pack a punch. Now, when I say that, I don't mean more severe, but it's looking like it's going to be spreading relatively easily. So it could help slow down the peaking process. While we may peak, it may keep things elevated for some time as this variant has to run its course. And of course, as you know, we have to see if anything else follows behind it. KP 2.3 is 12.8%, LB.1 is 10.5%, and what I can tell you is the West Coast is going to peak first. There's already indications. You just saw Las Vegas. We have showed you Hawaii in the past. Uh, things are starting to peak in the West Coast. The South would then follow. The Northeast and the Midwest It's going to take a little bit more time, and KP.3.1.1 may actually probably add an extra boost to what's already happening up here in the Northeast. Speaking of that, let's take a look at two states in the Northeast right now. First off, taking a look at New Jersey, they report 342 hospitalizations today. Remember, sometimes we see this number change by well over 100 in one day. It's what's happening in New Jersey right now. I don't know why their data changes so frequently, but it does. 342 hospitalizations, 6 people on a ventilator, 37 people in the ICU, and 34 discharges at this time. Drum roll please, hopefully we got something out of New York State today, and unfortunately I'm not seeing anything here for New York State. It's saying last update was on the 19th. Let's try for hospitalizations. As I tried to update this earlier, I got nothing. Okay, I am getting something for the hospitalizations, and I do want to zoom this in just a little bit so we can see what's going on here. And it does look like their hospitalizations have dropped a little bit, but they're still over a 1,000, and I expect we will see the typical Tuesday rise that we usually see during waves in New York State. 1,035 people in the hospital, 92 people in the ICU in New York State at this time. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Monday edition of the Pandemic Update. We'll have another edition of the Pandemic Update again tomorrow. Remember, you can follow me over at COVID Data Report. And, of course, for my other stuff that I talk about in terms of weather and climate, that is Climate Data Report. And I'm going to be doing some heavy tweeting on that account this afternoon about flooding threats, the wildfire threats. There's a lot of things. I've been doing some research. There's a lot of news stories to be shared on that X page, and I'm going to be doing that this evening. All right, if you enjoyed this update, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you want to continue to be informed. Hit that notification bell. Share these videos with anyone you know. And, of course, leave your comments down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, have a fantastic Monday afternoon, and thanks for watching.